People who saved all of their money at a young age instead of living and now are 50 plus years old. How are your lives today? Do you regret your life choices when it comes to the money aspect? We scrimped for decades. Our house is paid off. We have one car payment for, um, three more months. We have no credit card debt. Our retirement savings are ahead of schedule. Next week, we head to Iceland for my 52nd birthday. Totally worth it. Nobody wants to be 75, sick, and too poor to quit working, no matter how much fun you had as a 20-something. I did mostly stupid things in my early 20s, but I always put at least 15% of my income into 401ks with matching benefits. After 24 years living the corporate middle manager cube life, we had the means to purchase a wholesale nursery, and now I'm a flower farmer. I just walked through my greenhouse with my dog with a cup of coffee, and I do not regret a penny of savings. Losing my job as a fairly well-paid engineering manager in the defense industry and having to sell my house during the housing crash in the early 90s ended up, in retrospect, being a defining moment in my current financial well-being. It took roughly six years to get back to anywhere near my former career trajectory after landing a good position in the cellular industry. Once brunt twice shy, my wife, a registered nurse, and I bought a home that was about half the price the bank said we qualified for. Our reasoning being, if one of us lost our job, most likely me again, because nurses, we wouldn't have to lose our home again. Fortunately, that never happened. We were both able to advance in our careers and were able to pay off our mortgage in seven years, fully fund our son's college education, max out our IRA contributions, and have literally no debt. My wife just paid cash for a Subaru Forester. Not the fanciest of cars or a status symbol by any means, but she loves it. Today is literally my last day at work before I voluntarily retire early at the age of 58. I feel like this is for the most part going to be very one-sided, except for people who have had just rotten luck in finances or maybe property investment or something like that, or bad tenants. We lived far below our means for nearly 30 years, saving all the money we could, bought a nice piece of property in the woods and started building a house, paid for construction out of our savings, took years to build, ended up with our dream house with no debt at all. Early 50s, I work in my profession part-time and my wife gardens, almost retired, totally worth it. While we were in savings mode, it didn't seem like we were sacrificing. Still had a great time with life, just drove cheaper cars and lived in a small house. Took vacations to visit friends instead of going to resorts. Living within our means meant we had no money worries after we got out of our 20s. I didn't live while at college. While all of my friends went to university and are in mountains of debt, I went to a junior college to get all of my basic classes out of the way, and then went part-time to university, which was cheaper and I could afford it while working a part-time job. It was a local university, so I had to live with mom and dad until I was 26, which sucked and I missed out on a lot of independence that comes with going away to school, but it was worth it. I graduated in six years with my BA instead of four, but with no debt. Without a monthly student loan, I was able to pay off my car quickly and can afford a lot of other things. Phones, computers, vacations, tools, Legos, etc. without worrying about where the money will come from. My wife and I live comfortably, she did the same thing, and we currently have a house, a three-year-old, and newer cars. I survived cancer surgery. All of those have been paid off except for the house, which will be paid off 10 years before it's due. We currently have 30 grand in checking and 42 grand in savings, in large part because we sacrificed when we were younger. Point of reference, 55 years old, did most everything the way you're supposed to. School, real jobs, lived conservatively, married, lowish tolerance, for risk, yada yada. It depends on one's definition of living, but for the most part, most of my regrets are about not having lived or taken chances or however you want to say it. It became apparent to me when I was an editor of a windsurfing magazine and around a lot of the sailors we covered, I was the one with a steady job and paycheck. A wife, I owned a home, drove a decent car. These guys were drifters. Irresponsible couch surfing, earning poverty wages, teaching windsurfing at various vacation destinations when they weren't competing. Most traveled around with pretty much everything they owned, their gear and clothes, and lived with their parents some of the time and friends and folks they met on the road at other times. Rarely did these guys have health insurance or more than a couple hundred bucks to their name at any one time. Yet these losers on the fast track to nowhere spoke multiple languages, traveled the world and experienced things that I never did or will. Plus, if I compared notes with any of them now, 15 plus years later, our lives probably wouldn't be all that different. It's not like I'm some multi-millionaire or saving lives or changing the world, I'm just a regular schmuck with a regular job like most of them likely are. But when we reflect, they've got a crap ton more cool stuff to remember than I do, much of which probably shaped them to be as cool now as I thought they were back then. I'll be 50 in February. I was a workaholic in my 20s and 30s and tried to save money, in that I didn't travel, take vacations, buy new cars or new clothes, etc. 
I missed out on two women who could have been great wives and mothers and instead married an insane person at 34. It took me a decade and her adultery for me to realize I could never change how her brain worked. She had three diagnosed conditions and I finally got out. Now I'm too old to remarry or have children and due to bad luck and two recessions, I have little to show for it. Although I do live in a nice house because my father left it to me when he died. I'm a tad regretful that I didn't live when I was young and had more energy. Many of my friends did and still do get into relationships and travel have children and live life to the fullest i'm getting to the point where i don't have the will to try again this is the first time i have written this publicly definitely unfortunate about the crazy wife i don't think you're going to find anybody in this thread that says oh boy i wished i had lived a little more in my 30s and now my spouse is dead and it was all a waste what you'll find are people who lived the life they wanted to live if traveling the world wasn't important at age 21 or 50 i doubt it will become hugely important at age 51 and if it does awesome for them the world has changed a lot in the last 30 years and they'll have different experiences than someone who say traveled partied spent money earlier in life life. Each has its own pros and cons. Not to be a negative Ned here, but I just want to point out that all the savers who died before being able to spend their nest egg won't be commenting for obvious reasons, although I'm sure their next of kin were grateful. I'm a 27-year-old that saves and invests more than 50% of my income, so I'll probably be the kind of person you're referring to around 50 or so. I think the relationship between living and spending need not be so highly correlated. I think many people have consumerism addiction where they need to buy a product to get a dopamine hit, whether the product adds to their life in a meaningful way or not. I live in a cheap apartment, drive a used car, eat food I make mostly myself, go on long hikes on trails where I'm not charged, train for and compete in marathons a couple of times a year, surf, never buy a new board. There's no reason why living needs to be so expensive that it results in no money being saved. The routine for many people seems to be work plus suffer, purchase product to feel relief, put product in garage amongst the other thousands of things you don't use, bank and investment account remains at zero dollars. This is not a good cycle. Nah, wait a minute. He's got a point. Yeah, I definitely nominated this one so far as the best one I've heard. I'm an aging Gen Xer and it was totally worth it. House is paid for, so the mortgage money goes to investment, kids, and fun. My wife was able to quit her job and stay at home since one salary was enough now. She may go back to work just to keep busy and because she wants to. We almost never paid interest on anything except the mortgage when we had it. Credit cards paid in full each month. We saved to buy cars and never financed them. We also keep cars for 10 to 20 years to maximize their value. My wife is a fanatic couponer and saved hundreds every month. She also just knows her prices and knows a good deal. So when it's time to spend, we spend wisely. I also insist on quality so we will spend more if something is worth it. Additionally, we paid off the house in 10 years rather than 30. Between the cars, house, and credit cards, we saved hundreds of thousands of dollars on interest, which all went to investments. We max out our 401k contributions each year. IRA for wife now. I know things are harder now and I feel for the millennials who want to do what I did but just can't. I work with many of them. I'm the old guy at work and they are great people. All smart, aware, and hardworking. I don't see the entitled thing at all. Maybe I live in a bubble, but this generation is pretty cool. Learn from parents who grew up in the depression with six children. We were still able to live below our means and never felt like we were going without. If you use your imagination, there are plenty of things you can do for free and have fun. We made it a point to set aside part of my check for first into a retirement account. My wife did not work, but worked hard staying home with our kids and housekeeping. Paid off the house in 17 years instead of 30 and actually retired early. All our children are self-sufficient and we are worth well over seven figures. The funny thing is, even with all this money, we still don't splurge, but have everything we need. I think the trick is to realize the difference between needs and wants. I have to thank my parents for this. We always asked ourselves, do we need this or want this? Also ask yourself if you can buy this used. We have always bought used cars with cash and kept them until the wheels fell off. We also gave generously to local charities as we felt so fortunate. So here's my deal. Retired at 52 but got killed earlier with a bad divorce and still managed to retire early. I've been sailing a yacht for 7 years now. Halfway around the world. How? Absolutely put a minimum of 20% of your gross income away. If you can't get most of that into a tax deferred account, you should be looking at 25-30%. to 30%. Cold hard reality, no magic and no wishing. That's a big chunk of your income. If you haven't started 
it, it will hurt too much so you'll likely fail. I always advise you start with what you can manage, then increase it when you get a raise. As in, up your savings by at least half of the raise, get to 20%. Get that money into the market while young. Try to get it automatically deposited into your retirement account so you don't see it, so you're not tempted. Other tips, get out of debt, debt equals slavery, never borrow unless you must, as in a house, buy a car that you can afford to pay with cash, save for it if you must, it's an old concept but credit is for the weak and those who will work into old age. Face it, you're a working stiff, the only time you pay yourself is when you invest in your freedom, your retirement. All other expenditures prolong your enslavement. Yeah man, we're all nothing but sleeping slaves for the government, man. I'm 44, so I'm not 50 plus yet, but I've invested mostly 401k, as much as I could afford since I started my first real job in 1994. As long as the economy doesn't do another 2008 anytime soon, I'm on track to retire by 55, maybe a year or two earlier with some luck. We simply don't live like we've got a lot of money. My wife's car is a 2008 Kia, until a few months ago I was driving a 2000 Saturn. I bought a 2013 Chevy Volt, used, and love it. I love not having to pump gas all the time, and I end up spending less to drive that way. Electricity is cheaper than gas. I gave my 2000 Saturn to my daughter to have something to drive at college. My eldest started college this year, and while she will have a little bit of student debt, a couple thousand each year, we'll probably pay it off once our mortgage is paid off in a year or two. It was more of a cash flow issue than anything. The original plan was to have the house completely paid off by the time the eldest started college, but we had a couple of years where we had to stop paying ahead on the mortgage due to the unexpected medical expenses. So now we're a little behind schedule on that. When we were looking for houses 15 years ago, the realtors were trying to get us to buy houses based on what we could afford, which meant that they were trying to get us to buy McMansions. I had to fire one realtor because she wouldn't stop, even after we told her we weren't interested in anything beyond 2.5 times my annual salary. So yeah, we could be living in a house that's valued at two or three times the one we live in, but then I wouldn't be retiring at 55. Honestly, it's all about delaying gratification and intentionally not choosing the most expensive thing you can afford. Our kids get three presents for Christmas, and none of them cost more than $30. That's better than my folks could afford, but it's not extravagant. I have work colleagues who spend 300 plus on their kids per Christmas. That's crazy to me. Our newest car until a month or two ago was a 2008. Many people won't delay gratification that long. They want a new car every three years. By taking care of what you have, it can last a lot longer. My eldest is driving the 2000 Saturn, and despite having 120,000 miles, it looks and runs like new. I learned to do regular maintenance myself, changing brakes, fluids, tires, even replaced the air conditioning compressor with one from a junkyard years ago. That Saturn has never had anything other than synthetic oil, things like that. You take care of stuff, it lasts a long time. And don't be so prideful that you have to have new stuff all the time. I mean, is impressing your neighbors that important to you that it's worth an extra 15 years of work? Not to me it isn't. Based on how things are sitting right now financially, we're on track for compounding interest to take over within a decade and match our income from working. At that point, we won't be able to spend it all, unless our taste changes dramatically, and I wouldn't expect that. Once we reach that point, it'll just be a matter of slowly shifting all the investments to lower and lower risk, like rental income, bonds, and money markets, until the income stream is pretty safe, and then I won't work anymore. Okay, I'm craving a different perspective on this now. I'm 46 and don't really have much of a retirement. I was a teacher in the South and mostly just live paycheck to paycheck, just getting by. But this isn't really about me, although I'm sure the circumstances has colored how I view money and savings. My two sisters and I grew up poor, although we really had no idea just how poor we were. My father worked a factory job with all of the overtime he could get while my mother stayed home with us till we were in fifth grade. My father had refused to allow her to work before marriage. My mom worked and lived with her parents, saving virtually every cent she made for her future home. After marriage, my father decided to spend her savings on a two-bedroom trailer to sit on my grandfather's property instead of investing in the home of which my mom had always dreamed. Years went by and the house they had hoped to build no closer and the trailer falling down about our ears. They had the house plans but no money to build and my father refused to take out a loan, insisting that they pay for it as they could. At this point, after countless arguments, my father agreed to allow my mom to return to work. I was in fifth grade. I remember watching our house slowly take shape behind the trailer. Mom had promised we could have a sleepover when it was completed. We moved into the mostly complete house my sophomore year of high school, but much work remained and still remains. My mother died of pancreatic cancer when she was 53. 
having never seen her house completed or driven a new car. She saved and scraped her entire life and never got to enjoy the things she most wished for. This was nearly 25 years ago. So yes, I understand the necessity of saving, but more so, I understand the importance of spending and enjoying life while you have it. I'm 30 and saved to a fault until I started my own company three years ago. I'm already considerably way ahead of my peers and have opportunities to get in deals that most wouldn't be a part of. The first 100k is tough, but compounding interest is a real thing. I have always lived well below my means and the freedom I have now was completely worth skipping the 2k spring breaks during college. I wasn't sure the saving would be worth it, but it absolutely completely is and was. I don't save as much anymore because my net worth is mostly tied to my business. I still save more than most, but not 50 to 70% of my income like before. When I lost 35k in a month of business ownership, saving $3 on coffee seemed a bit trivial. Bonus, it's true. Money won't make you happy. Not having money will make you unhappy. But having 1 million instead of 500k isn't really life-changing. I plan on making a lot more because I enjoy creating value and that's how capitalism works. I don't think anyone needs more than 10 million, but that's just me. 300k guaranteed a year in interest and dividends without touching the principal is pretty good living. Spending 1,000 day for the rest of your life would be exhausting. My opinion has changed before, but I value my time more than money now. Getting from 10 to 100 million seems like a whole lot of work and risk and stress for not very much change in lifestyle. I have employees making well above 70k magic number and they're still broke and trying to keep up with the Jones. Living paycheck to paycheck seems horrendous. Your 45k truck doesn't make me think you're cool. It makes me think you're stupid. Minimalism solves a lot of problems. Spend on what makes you happy, not on what other people might think think of you. Buy quality over quantity and always live below your means. When I first started as a nurse, I had a patient who was in his early 50s. I was his nurse for three days in a row and got to know him and his family relatively well. The background is him and his wife had saved all of their lives so they could retire early and comfortably, working pretty long hours and sacrificing experiences so they could eventually enjoy retirement. They had retired six months prior to his hospitalization and had bought a large house and an RV so they could travel across the USA. Shortly after retiring, he had started acting odd, and they went in for a checkup. He was found to have a large glioblastoma and was given a life expectancy of about seven months. He had already started having personality changes and the wife was in tears most of the time, at least when I had him. At the end of my shift on my last day, she gave me a hug and told me that she would have done things differently if she could. She said she wished she would have worked less and enjoyed life more, rather than always looking forward. She whispered, all the money in the world doesn't matter if you don't have anyone to spend it with. I remember seeing his obituary a few months later, but the moment really stuck with me. My wife and I are saving a lot now, but we're making sure not to restrict ourselves too much because who knows, life is too darn short. Even though it really sucks that that guy died before he could like use the money or do whatever the hell they wanted to do together, like, I, I think it's probably good to know that at least, you know, your significant other is going to live relatively comfortably with the money that you saved, even if you can't enjoy it with them? It's a balance. It's very important to save money and invest early if you want to retire at a reasonable age. This doesn't have to mean living like a hermit. Learning to be more resourceful, less spendthrifty, and more self-reliant is not only great on the wallet, but I have found to be very rewarding. I'm scraping by in my mid-30s, had a little extra income in my 20s that I used to travel and see things. Probably could have paid off my car with it, but I don't regret it at all. I could never have had the experiences I did and met the people I did if I had waited until I was 60, and I would have missed learning about the world and different cultures that has shaped who I am today. If you have the chance to do something, take it. We're all going to die and we're all getting old. Make experiences to make life fulfilling and worth living. You won't need to travel as much when you're old, weak, tired, and no fun. Old people who have lived full lives are happy. Those who haven't are miserable. I think I'm just going to refer to the other things and be like, no, you can still have fun and, you know, spend your money wisely. Like, yeah, you probably should have paid your car off, to be honest. But whatever. I was always worried about balancing the present with the future when it came to money. The odds are very good that you will live to a retirement age, so not preparing for it is foolish. That being said, it's no fun going through life only preparing for the future and not living when you're young and capable of doing so much. My solution, start a 401k type account as soon as you start your career. If there's a company match, ramp up the percentage to get the full match ASAP. Every time you get a raise, increase your contribution by 1%. Hopefully, your raise is more than 1% and you will still see an increase in net pay. Never touch that money. Roll it over if you change jobs. Invest somewhat aggressively since you are in it 
for decades. No need to be timid. I topped out at 12%, but with pensions pretty much gone, 15-20% to 20 is more realistic. Most people don't understand the concept of compounding interest. The first few decades might not seem that impressive, but the last decade of your savings can amount to a crap load of money. Not necessarily about this topic, my first roommate at med school in the Caribbean was a nice guy who studied real hard. Never drank, I forced him to come out and party maybe once. He finished everything without taking any breaks. He got accepted to a great residency program with a dual specialty a few weeks before his 23rd birthday. I spoke with him around the time and he had a head full of gray hair and put on a lot of weight from not working out. He said he felt like he was about to turn 43 and he looked like it too. He absolutely regretted not hanging out a little more while the rest of us looked up to him and his work ethic. It really is as simple as find a healthy balance. I mean, I am more the person that spent money on trips, going places and doing things, but you know, as I get older, I'm getting to that point where I'm like, yeah, it's time I start buckling down and putting my money in like, you know, investments and all that stuff to try and, you know, get ready for the future. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description below.